guys, I'm Sally with Owl Crate Jr. and I'm here today with another middle grade book haul. All of these books come out in June and July of this year, so you can go and add them to your TBR right away for the summertime. I have a great big stack of books to go through, so let's just get going. The first one on my list is Annie B. Made for TV by Amy Dixon. This is all about 11 year old Annie who has a knack for inventing things that are sort of like a made for TV type invention. Um, and it's all about her friendship with her best friend Savannah who kind of steals her thunder a lot of the time. She's uh, the star of a lot of things and Annie kind of feels second fiddle to her except when it comes to inventions. So when Annie finds out that there is an audition coming up for a, uh, a web series all about inventions, she's super excited to try out for it. For anyone out there who loves Junie B. Jones but is ready for a bit more of a reading challenge, I think this would be a great next step. This one came out in June. Next up is The Mortification of Fovia Munson by Mary Wynn Hyder. This is one, <laughs> the concept really grosses me out, but it's been getting great reviews, so I might have to just push past my own stuff. Basically, it's about Fovia Munson, whose parents run a cadaver lab, and it's her job during the summer to work at the lab, running errands and stuff. Um, it, it grosses me out already there, but the funny part is that uh, three heads that are left out to thaw suddenly start talking to Fovia and uh, have a favor to ask her. Um, it's supposed to be super funny and um, and there's a bit of a, you know, a mystery and hijinks that come along with it. So I'm definitely going to have to give this one a try, I think. This one came out on June 5th. Next we have The Unforgettable Guinevere St. Clair by Amy McKechnie. Uh, this is all about a very go-getter little girl named um, Guinevere St. Clair who uh, is determined to be a lawyer when she grows up and she uh, she just sort of knows everything about everything. Um, but her family picks up and moves back to her mom's hometown because ever since Guinevere was four years old, her mom has basically had amnesia from any time after she was 13. So her mom is still alive and living with them but doesn't have any memories of her current life so they move back to the hometown to try and like jog her memory and figure out what is happening it's been described as having the heart of the thing about jellyfish meets the spunk of eloise so that is two high recommendations there i suggest you pick this one up it came out in june next we have everything i know about you from barbara d this one has been recommended for slightly older audience i would say um maybe nine or ten and up um, because it does deal with um, some eating disorder stuff, which can be triggering and is a, a lot to uh, discuss for younger kids. But it sounds like a really great story. Um, so the main character, Talia, goes on a overnight field trip to Washington with her class and is um, paired up as roommates with one of like the popular girls in school who she's not comfortable around. Um, and slowly starts to realize that maybe there's something going on with this popular girl and maybe not everything in her life is as perfect as it may seem. Um, sounds like a, a great friendship story and a really um, good take on a lot of, on something that is very relevant for a lot of people. This one came out on June 19th. Next up, we have Lions and Liars by Kate Beasley. I believe I've spoken about this one in a monthly wrap up before because I read it a few months ago and I really enjoyed it. Um, our main character, Frederick Fredrickson, uh, is sort of a, a bit of a wallflower at school and um, sort of just wants to be seen more and recognized more at school. So when he accidentally ends up at a summer camp and there is a case of mistaken identity, he rolls with that case of mistaken identity because it comes with a lot of power. Um, obviously, all kinds of stuff happens because pretending you're somebody else never really works out as it uh, may seem like it will on paper, but um, it was super fun. And uh, I thought for a book that had all boy main characters, it had some really great emotions, which is awesome to see. This one came out on June 5th. Next up, we have The Boy, The Boat, and The Beast by Samantha M. Clark. This one I'm very intrigued by, and I've only had the chance to read the first chapter, but I will be returning to it as soon as I can. Um, basically, the, the main character washes up on a beach and has no memory of how he got there um but there's there's certain things that the island sort of um uh 
supplies for him in, ab in abundance, and then there's other things that, uh, that just don't make sense. But basically he's trapped there, there's some elements of magical realism, um, and he, he can't leave, but he also has to like constantly protect himself from this uh, chimera-type beast that lives on the island. Um, it's been described as lyrical and heart-catching, a page-turner of a mystery with a profoundly satisfying conclusion. I'm very curious to read this one. And this one came out on June 26th. Next up, we have The Jamie Drake Equation by Christopher Edge. This is all about a boy named Jamie Drake whose father is a famous astronaut who is currently in space on a mission. Um, so it's a, a family story sort of about what it's like to be the family still on Earth, but it's also a mystery because there's a, an unexpected signal that comes from space and then um, his mission is sort of put into jeopardy a bit. Uh, so Jamie has to try and help him from home. I believe this was a previous UK release, but it came out here in, on June 26th. Next up, we have Takedown by Laura Chauvin. This is a dual perspective book um, all about the world of wrestling. And um, one perspective is Michaela, who is uh, the only girl in a household of wrestling boys, um, and Lev, who has been wrestling for years, but um, is suddenly paired up with a girl as his partner on the wrestling team. So it's a book about um, family and friendship and wrestling with expectations, pun intended, um, and just like breaking down barriers of, um, especially in a, in a very male dominated sport. I have been watching a lot of GLOW lately, which is obviously more like professional wrestling, wrestling than uh, Greco style wrestling, but uh, it makes me really want to read this. This one came out on June 19th. Next up we have The House That Lou Built by Mae Respicio. This is all about a girl named Lou who was living in San Francisco with her mom, um, and her father passed away when she was born and has left her a little plot of land, um, sort of out in, in the country of uh, just outside of San Francisco. So when her mom um, gets a job offer that would take them out of San Francisco and take her away from the life she knows, she decides that she's gonna build her dream house on this little plot of land so that she can stay. Um, I really liked this book. Lou is like uh, just such a capable young girl and she's she loves woodworking and she loves like drawing out blueprints and she just like knows what she's doing. It's a lovely coming of age. It's a great friendship story. I just thought it was really cool. And this one came out on June 12th. Next we have Captain Superlative by J.S. Puller. Um, this is a contemporary story um, all set in a middle school um, where there's sort of like a notorious bully and then a, in a response to uh, to the bully Captain Superlative emerges, who is a masked superhero um, who goes around spreading kindness and doing nice things for people. And Janie, who's a bit of a, a wallflower, um, becomes her sidekick and uh, they sort of make it their mission to, to spread happiness and kindness throughout the school. I just really like the concept. Haven't had a chance to read it through, but, um, but I'm looking forward to it. This one comes out in July. Next, we have Dennis Ever After by Tony Abbott. This is an otherworldly mystery that I would recommend probably for 10 to 14. Um, it does get a little bit dark from what I've heard, but it also sounds really intriguing. Um, so Dennis Egan uh, died five years ago um, and his uh, twin brother can't, is having a lot of trouble letting it go. So Dennis comes back to help uh, his brother move on and figure out what happened because there was a, a lot of um, mystery and unsolved things around uh, Dennis's disappearance and death. Um, there definitely are some dark elements to this, as I mentioned, um, but uh, it's a really interesting sounding mystery with a ghostly element. This one comes out on July 24th. Next up, we have Courage by Barbara Binns. First of all, I'm just gonna say, I love this cover. I think it's beautiful. This is a story all about uh, our main character, Tishan, who um, has a lot of stress going on at home. Um, his father has passed away and his brother has recently uh, returned home from prison. So, um, so sort of as a way to, to deal with all the stress at home or hide from the stress at home, he really starts to like throw himself into his diving practice which he is excellent at and has 
earned a scholarship for. Um, but uh, obviously you can't entirely hide from the, the things that are going on at home. This one's been recommended for fans of Ghost and Booked and is uh, all about race, class, and the strength of brotherly love. Sounds really great. This one comes out at the end of July on the 31st. Next we have The Turning by Emily Whitman. Um, this is all about uh, Scottish folklore um, and selkies, which are like mythical seal creatures um, that can transform between humans and seals. Uh, so our, the main character in this book um, is a selkie, but he was born in his human form. Uh, and while the, the rest of his clan is sort of mainly lives underwater, he hasn't developed his full selkiness yet, basically. Um, so it is a real like coming of age story and a family story with some mythology mixed into it, um, just about like finding your place and finding out who you are. If you enjoyed The Girl Who Drank the Moon or Echo, I think you'll really enjoy this one as well. This comes out on July 24th. Next up, we have Freddie Mole Lion Tamer by Alexander McCall Smith. Um, I'm more familiar with Alexander McCall Smith from his adult books. He did the number one ladies detective agency, um, but he is a wonderful writer for children as well. Um, and this is one um, for more beginner readers. It's full of illustrations and has, you know, sort of nice, nice spacing for, uh, for beginners. Um, but I think this one would make a very fun read aloud. It's all about Freddie Mole, who um, comes from a great family who is, you know, struggling to make ends meet. Um, but then a circus comes to town and Freddy manages to get a job with them and all sorts of stuff happens, obviously, involving lions. It sounds super fun. I really love these illustrations. You can pick this one up on July 10th. Next up, we have Margot and Mateo Save the World by Darcy Miller. This story starts with a mysterious blue slug that ends up on somebody. It turns out that the slug is an alien and it's been, it's just like infecting everybody and spreading oozing terror sort of around the neighborhood. So Margot and Mateo take it upon themselves to rid the world of these aliens. Uh, it sounds super funny and super silly. Um, it's been recommended for fans of Gordon Corman and Gary D. Schmidt. Sounds like a great addition to the middle grade sci-fi world and you can pick this one up on July 3rd. Next we have Where the Watermelons Grow by Cindy Baldwin. Um, I believe this one has a twist of magical realism to it, but I might be wrong on that. Regardless, I'm very intrigued by this the, the concept of this story. Um, our 12-year-old main character, uh, basically since she was born, her mother has struggled with schizophrenia. And Della, the main character, sort of takes it on that, that it's, you know, she kind of blames herself for it. Um, and also decides that, that she's the one who has to fix it. On top of all this, the, the watermelon farm that her family owns is uh, struggling just due to, uh, you know, disease and pests and a bad season. So she decides that the best way to help was with the, the help of the bee lady who lives in her hometown of Maryville, North Carolina. So there's this magic honey that's been healing people for generations. Um, and she decides that that, that is what's gonna heal her family. So with the help of uh, this bee lady and the honey, she sort of learns that it's more her own heart that needs healing rather than trying to fix her mom. It sounds really heartbreaking and really magical and I'm looking forward to reading this one. It comes out on July 3rd. Next, we have Smack Dab in the Middle of Maybe by Joe Watson Hackle. This is a combination of a family story set in Mississippi and an art mystery. So our main character is Cricket, whose artist mother um, has uh, run away. So the only clue that Cricket has to where her mother has gone is a coin that belongs to a grown over ghost town, not far from where she lives. So Cricket decides to pack up and run away and follow this clue as far as it will take her, um, which involves surviving in the woods by herself, which turns out she's very good at doing. It is a coming of age story that asks how far would you go to find something that might not even exist. This one comes out on July 10th. Next, we have My Year in the Middle by Lila Quintero Weaver. I believe the cover of this one that is in stores um, is quite different from this, just so you know if you go looking for it. 
Um, it is a historical fiction that um, combines issues of racial tension and segregation with uh, our main character's newly discovered talent for running track. This is all based on Lila Quintero Weaver's own experiences as an Argentinian immigrant um, in living in Alabama. Um, she's uh, 11 years old in this story. Um, and yeah, it's about like finding your place and dealing with social injustices. And uh, it sounds really great. This one comes out in July. Next up, we have The Rhino and Wright Field by Stacey DeKeeser. So this story is set in 1948, and our main character is Nick, who is a first-generation Greek-American. Um, his uh, family owns uh, a shop in town, and his father is very hardworking and wants to instill that in Nick as well. But Nick just wants to be playing baseball. Um, so uh, the baseball field that him and all of his friends play, play on backs up right against the city zoo, which is where this rhino comes into play. The, uh, the ball goes into the rhino's pen and Nick goes in after it and sort of just gets out in time. But, uh, but the two of them are then somehow linked. Um, there's all kinds of stuff going on in here. Really fun sports story, lots of great family elements. Um, and it's just been getting excellent reviews. This one comes out on July 10th. Next is The Door to the Lost by Jaylee Johnson. This is another one that I've talked about more at length in another wrap-up video that we've done. Um, but uh, basically, this is a fantasy story set in a world where um, magic used to exist and be very commonplace, um, but a sort of catastrophic event has happened and the, the, the pathway between the magic world and the non-magic world has exploded. Um, and sealed off. But uh, right before that happened, uh, a bunch of children came through the barrier um, and they have no memory of their prior life, but all of them have magic and are now living in this world where magic is very much not okay. Um, so our two main characters, uh, one has the ability to draw doors that can connect anywhere and the other has the power of um, light and sort of controlling the air. Um, it's a really neat fantasy world that uh, Jaylee Johnson has created. I think there's going to be more to this series. I can't confirm that for sure, but uh, I would be very happy to read more of it. This comes out on July 3rd. Next up, we have Curse of the Werewolf Boy by Chris Priestley in the Maudlin Towers series. I think this is the first in the Maudlin Towers series, and I definitely hope there's more to come. Um, it is uh, a very British story um, that is for fans of Lemony Snicket and Nightmares um, and uh, is perfect for young readers who like their mysteries with a bit of bite, is what the back says. Um, so uh, Maudlin Towers is a boarding school for boys. Um, it's very dreary. There are gargoyles everywhere. Uh, and uh, uh, a mystery unfolds when a special spoon that belongs to the school goes missing. Um, and it turns out that there's some otherworldly elements going on that uh, the boys did not know existed in this uh, gloomy school of theirs. It's very funny. Uh, it's full of uh, sort of Edward Gorey-esque illustrations, which I of course love um, and really add to the, the mood of the story. Um, I love Chris Priestley and I think that you guys will as well. This one comes out on July 10th. So I think that should keep even the most avid reader busy until the end of July. We'll be following this up with an August middle grade uh, book haul a little bit later in the summer. Until then, happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye!